Good afternoon, AI community, and welcome to Ray Summit by AnyScale. We're here on our home turf in San Francisco, California. My name is Savannah Peterson. Delighted to be broadcasting live all afternoon with some of the fantastic guests and keynote speakers that have been on this stage. We are starting today off with such a bang. You may be wondering about AI filmmaking. If you are, you've certainly heard of Runway. Anastasis, thank you so much for taking the time to hang out with me today. Of course, happy to be here. How, how was your keynote this morning? I got to see it packed room, standing room only. It seems like you've got to be getting used to telling people about AI filmmaking. Were you at all nervous or excited about today in particular, given how, how big the show, showroom floor is? Uh, I, I think the interesting part is that just because the field is moving so fast, like our tools are evolving so fast, like every, every time I get to talk to, um, to an audience, it's, we have like something new out, so it's something different every time. Um, so that's exciting, like I think it's, um, it's, it's great to talk about some of the work that we've been doing uh, on the research side and our, on our tool side, um, and, and kind of give a glimpse of like what's also coming, coming up. You did a good job of giving us a teaser, and we'll get into that in a second. What are some of the tools that you've adopted since the last time you were able to present? What are some of the newest tools in your kit? Yeah, so most recently we released our video to video tool. Uh, so that allows you to take an input video and, can, and translate it while maintaining the structure, translate it, completely transform the style of that video. Uh, so that's a really versatile tool because you can really, you know, like uh, control the exact motion that you want to generate. Uh, while at the same time produce really, you know, really amazing like stylistic results with it. Um, so we see people using that kind of complementary to like image to video and text to video. Like there's a place for all those different tools. Yeah, so that, that would make sense as as the evolution. And when it comes to our visual language, it's not or it's not just language. It's visuals. There's context, as you said, as you were saying in your keynote. I loved the controllability aspect of what Runway does. Is it allows you to take people into a new portal or a new dimension or do things that have never been done before? Do you have any examples from recent times where you were really surprised by something that someone created or or something that was very visually intriguing? You don't think we could have made before? Yeah. So. Um, one example that uh, happened fairly recently was uh, like um, Madonna, you, uh, Madonna's live concert kind of tour used runway for all the kind of uh, uh, visuals that were being displayed during uh, during her performances. Wow! Um, so this is a use case that was not necessarily like what we originally kind of considered runway for, but it was a, a really nice. Um, really nice example of you know using the visuals and the kind of generative uh, storytelling to produce like really compelling visuals uh, and we saw like you know like talking to the artists that created those visuals um, they specifically said that they were able to uh, really get away from the more traditional VFX look and like create something that feels novel and that feels different than what's already out there and so this is kind of exactly what we envision runway to be able to create I, I was going to imagine that had to be music to your ears I just have to know, when you co-founded Runway, were you expecting the call from Madonna's team to use your product to, to show off art to millions of people? Well, the great thing is very often uh, those tools are being used without even us knowing. Like people find out by themselves that, that like they can use Runway for really interesting use case and just, yeah, they just adopt the tool. Uh, so that's that's what we want to see. Like it's not necessarily you know us reaching out to to a specific artists and like kind of trying to get them to use their tools. Like if people like we want people to really find uh, find runway to be useful and find runway to be a kind of creative creative extension of themselves. Absolutely, and I think I think that becomes a bit of a, a controversial topic when people think about art and AI, and I know what side of the fence that we sit on, but I think for folks still learning about how these tools are going to augment the creative process, this is a really great example. I mean, especially, I, I don't know if, if Runway was used when she did her concert for 1.6 million people or whatever it was down in Rio, but you can't see someone with your eyes at, you know, if there's 1.6 million people in the crowd, so you've got to have cool visuals that are an extension of that expression and not just video. What are some of the other things that you're excited to see people creating? I know you have your AI Film Fest this year. You had five extra submissions of last year. Congratulations, very exciting. Anything interesting come out of that? Um, so 
Yeah, a lot of amazing films on the festival. Like every every year, it feels that we reach a completely different kind of level of quality of like kind of consistency with those uh, with those kind of movies and, and that are being made. Um, we also recently uh, announced the 100 film uh, fund, uh, and the goal of that is to kind of more directly support uh, specific uh, AI-driven kind of filmmaking projects. Uh, and we also are doing uh, the 48 Hour Film Festival. So we like very. Um, that was a few weeks ago. Uh, you have essentially a weekend to create a film, um, and we've done that three times. And this time was the first time we, like people could use Gen3 Alpha. And it was a, on a completely different level of like the, you know the kinds of stories that were being told, the kind of like stylistic uh, diversity of the of the uh, of the videos, the kind yeah. of the narrative, uh, the, the narrative and the experimental aspect. It was uh, it was really amazing to see kind of what people created, um, and that's only going to kind of continue as as the models get better, as more people find out about runway, um, and I think that's at the core of um, how. That conversation, I think, will evolve. Is like the moment you actually um, use the tools by yourself, you realize, you know, it becomes demystified, and you see them as, you know, just a, you know, a next technological uh, leap for, you know, our tools. It's not necessarily like um, uh, something entirely, uh, entirely new. It's not like that, you know, the. Uh, AI is creating the artwork by itself, which mm -hmm. is a common perception about those AI-driven <clears throat> right. tools. It's really a kind of creative, giving you superpowers, allowing you to make more choice in a, in a shorter period of time, and that's, I think, what, what's what's really exciting about those tools. It is, you know, and you can agree or disagree with this or share your perspective, but when I think about art or creating anything or even what we're doing right now, I feel like sometimes what we're trying to do is press print on our brain. You know, you're trying to communicate some vision that you can see in your head that doesn't necessarily translate to a traditional storyboard or to sketching or even the ability to verbally communicate sometimes. And I think, and I'm curious to see what you think, I think that AI as a creative tool is helping us unlock more of that, almost like a Z-axis within the creative mind that was maybe st stuck a little bit by the tools that we had beforehand, or at least the skills required to use those tools. Yeah, exactly. We see it as a, as a new kind of camera. Like, it really, yeah. it's all about where you point oh, it to. Put it. Uh, yeah. It's, you know, you point it to uh, worlds that are not yet exist, that are generated as you point the camera. But ultimately, it's really about, like, your kind of agency as an artist and your ability to, like, have a very specific vision you want to tell. Uh, so we see the same, the same thing that applies to, you know, previous tools applies here. Like, it has a learning curve and you need to, like, it pays off to really spend a lot of time with the tool and we see like some people becoming really exceptional with the tools uh, similar to you know people uh, achieving mastery in previous generation of tools uh, so nothing nothing is different from that regard it's just that the tools hopefully empower people to uh, to create more in a shorter period of time yeah do you think that this is empowering or even as some might say democratizing the creative process with tools like runway I think so, and and we see that you know it, uh, it's not just new folks that are kind of now entering uh, uh, this kind of filmmaking world or like creating artwork for the first time. Uh, a lot of established filmmakers are finding value from those tools. Um, something that we often uh, hear from, especially uh, filmmakers, is like. They can use Runway to uh, experiment with uh, ideas that they previously were like, not sure if like, it was an idea worth kind of investing in. Right, because like, it is very expensive. Traditional production can be quite expensive, especially with VFX. Yeah, so that's like lowering kind of the, uh, the barrier to actually trying out an idea and will allow people to really um, to really just see, like, oh, is this something that's, you know, if, if something feels too risky of an idea to kind of experiment with, now you can actually visualize it for the first time, and then you get a better kind of intuition about, is this something that I can, I need to pursue more and, like, build a larger story around. Uh, but yeah. you kind of reduce that, like, kind of hesitation of, like, should I actually pursue this? Because now you can actually just quickly try it on your own, and then if it's worth kind of 
uh, investing more on, you can like do that. Yeah, well I think you brought up a really great point when we were chatting before we went live about, about the development process within film. It's not just about a two hour feature film, it's also about getting that buy in, it's about pitching it, it's about selling that MVP or even getting funding from your 100 film fund, for example, is you want to be able to show it off it seems like there's a lot of opportunity for creators to pump this out, to give a little teaser. Do you see that happening a lot? Yeah, so the way we think about kind of the adoption of tools like Runway is it doesn't have to be a binary thing where you know you go from zero to like not using charity models at all to immediately using it for every right. aspect of your project. It can be very gradual. Like you might want to use Runway for a bit on the kind of pre-production side. You want to do some storyboarding, just like uh, kind of test out the waters, like see like the shape of your how the shape of your story looks like, mm -hmm. um, and you know if. Uh, you have a good experience with it and you find new value in it and you can potentially use uh, some shows that are generating runway in the actual uh, your actual output and your actual film. Uh, but it's really like whatever part of the creative workflow like like you can um, runway can help uh, in like I think that's like it's it's fine like it doesn't have to be you know zero to one. Like, You're happy to like, just be a part of the process. It doesn't matter which piece of that process necessarily. Right. Yeah. What would you say, so I've got some wonderful friends in Hollywood, shout out to all my friends, you know who you are, that are a little nervous about AI. What would, what would be your advice to them? What, would you, how could they get started or try it out? How do you hold, handhold people who are coming from the older side of film production? Yeah, so a lot of the way we see our role is to essentially become kind of translators be, like uh, between those two very different languages, the language of AI and like kind of technology and yeah. the language of art and like creative tools. Um, and so that, that's really our role is we have, you know, we have a creative team in house that's, you know, working with artists every day, kind of trying to get them to kind of really working to understand like what, uh, how to incorporate um, at like runway and if runway is useful in their own projects. Um, so there is definitely some hand holding involved and like I think that's, we see that as part of our role is to, you know, educate and show like what you can do with those tools. Yeah. Um, but I think the best way to start is really like, you know, runway is available for every Everyone to try. You can go in and try it out. Um, we do uh, invest a lot on building more um, kind of partnerships with kind of the entertainment industry. Um, we announced a partnership with the Lionsgate recently. I was just um, about to bring that up. Tell us about that. Yeah, so we're like, again very excited to uh, to work with film studios directly and like to tell, work with the best storytellers. Uh, to see how generative kind of media, how generative tools uh, can be used in their workflow. And uh, Lionsgate is like, you know, they're masters of their craft. Uh, so we're very excited to kind of collaborate together. Uh, we're starting from, you know, a training a, 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 a custom model uh, on a Lionsgate uh, gallery, but uh, also we're, we're just generally are trying to figure out like what are different kind of projects, what are different uh, where we where runway can really provide value and we can build specialized tools to address like you know to help with that specific project um, I think we're you know we're there's still a lot of uh, a lot of discovery and a lot of things that we need to figure out in order to make those models useful um, and for us we see our role now just like building the models but actually you know really crossing that chasm between you know like cool results and like cool outputs and like something that feels like an extension of your like creativity and extension of revision. Yeah, it's different to say, wow, it's another thing to be completely moved by, say, a feature film. So how long are we away from a category at the Oscars for a Gen AI feature film? Uh, well, hopefully it's not a category. Uh, hopefully, um, kind of, again, Gen AI becomes domestified and those tools just become yet, yet another, you know, like part of the kind of filmmakers toolbox. Mm -hmm. uh, so we actually don't want a separate category. I like category it, this is good, for, this is good, yeah, yeah. Models. Like we, we, like we think that if those models are useful, they're gonna be part of, you know, films that are being made in every category. At the so it's gonna be like when we got better, lighter cameras and a lot of other things that right. happen on the editing side. Ooh, I like it, okay. The moment we're successful is when people don't talk about, you know, the generative models that might be used in a film. It's like, you know, they're using the best tool for the job. Yeah. 
Yeah, so what is next? You mentioned the 100 Film Fund. Who's funding those 100 films? Is that you as a company? Are there partners? Yeah, so uh, we have a, um, a part of Runway called the Runway Studios that's working there like, with creators and artists and uh, teams of um, uh, teams of creators. Um, and, uh, and Runway Studios is funding uh, kind of this effort. Uh, and the idea is to you know, support projects that we find like really compelling, really promising. Uh, give the time and space for uh, for those artists to really develop their project. And you know, it could be it could take a different shapes and forms. Like we don't have like a specific uh, idea in mind of like what kind of stories could be told. We want to be surprised. Yeah. Uh, but uh, we do we do want to find more ways of you know supporting the generative media kind of community, figuring out like. Um, like what's what's next for, uh, and th that will hopefully also in inform the tools that we build uh, and how we kind of develop the product moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I can't wait to see those hundred films that you end up funding. It's going to be too, it's, yeah. it's going to be really interesting. I think we'll all be surprised and delighted. We're here at Ray Summit. We've talked a lot about tools. How important is it for you to have tools like Ray that can handle the variety of different models and things that you're constantly working with? Uh, I think versatility is really important. Uh, like we, um, yeah, I, I, as I mentioned in my presentation, um, you know, there's less established standards for language model training as there mm -hmm. is for, uh, uh, there's less established standards for video model training as there is for language model training. Um, and and we're essentially inventing the kind of the paradigm as we as we go as we build those models as we scale them even further. Uh, and what's nice about Ray is that it has a really nice kind of developer experience, and you can uh, you can build those new components and those primitives. Uh, and so we like we, we, we use Ray on a dif on different aspects of our kind of kind of data and training pipeline uh, uh, in order to you know accelerate kind of our uh, our efforts to build those models. It makes a lot of sense. When, when, I, when you were speaking at the keynote, I, I was struck by realizing how much we don't understand our visual environment and, and, and building models around that. What's the biggest challenge or difference between building models that are based on our visual world versus our, our language? So there is specific engineering and technical challenges involved with uh, working with video versus with language. Yeah. Um, uh, you have, first of all, like in terms of like size, you have its order of magnitude, uh, right. larger data sets, and you so you much deal data with, uh, yeah. with language, uh, and you, you, you all, it can also take many, many different shapes and forms, maybe different resolutions, aspect ratios. Uh, so there is different aspects that you need to deal with specifically when you're working with visual data. Um, I think the, the 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 other side of this is that um, there is a lot of. Um, subjective uh, evaluation that must go on when you're building those models. Mm -hmm. um, it's, you know, you can I you was can wondering try about to, that. Yeah, dig in there. You can try to, you know, develop quantitative metrics to um, evaluate different aspects of, you know, the model's understanding of, uh, of, different, of different concepts, of the model's understanding of, you know, camera movements, uh, the ability to render text, like all those different capabilities. Uh, but ultimately, you're making visual content that's meant to, you know, evoke feelings to, um, uh, to people to have like people have visual, visual, visceral reaction to that. Exactly the emotion um, of it. And that's hard to capture in like one specific metric. So we're doing, you know, working together with a creative team. We're doing a, a lot of kind of uh, more subjective evaluation. Uh, more kind of uh, paying attention to the aesthetics of uh, of the outputs of those models. Uh, they're really trying to make sure that you know the outputs of those models are uh, are able to be used in like creative purposes. Yeah, it's a lot of different factors to be thinking about within even a single piece of visual data. Oh, super exciting! All right, last question for you. You talked about how everything's changing all the time. You're changing tools. There's all this exciting stuff going on with your film fests and the funds. What do you hope to be able to say the next time we sit down at Ray Summit, for example, a year from now that you can't yet say today? It's a, it's a great question. I think if I, like, uh, a big part of like how we think about uh, planning a runway is we discovery and the ability to be surprised at the very core of like what we're working on. Yeah. And if I could predict fully like what 
I'm going to be saying a year from now, like we maybe would not have succeeded in our goal because with every new model that we build, we're always surprised at the capabilities that uh, are present in, the mo in, in that model mm -hmm. versus the previous generation models. So we do expect that you're going to be able to tell much more coherent stories where, you know, you can have like character consistency, environment consistency. You're going to be able to have, you know, uh, scenes with dialogue and like more complex interactions than, uh, yeah. than we, we have today. Um, like that's fairly straightforward to predict. But in terms of the actual stories and the actual narratives and movies that are going to be made with those models, uh, I really hope we're surprised by you know like what gets created. I think that's that's that, that's uh, that's the fun part of like building those tools. Uh, it's like that you know people constantly surprise us with what they create. I love that. So actually, your answer to that question is not so much what you hope to be able to say, but what you hope not to be able to say, which is we expected this, but that we're consistently surprised and alive. Thank you so much for taking the time with us on what is undoubtedly a very busy day. This has been delightfully educational. And thank all of you for tuning in to our wonderful full day of coverage here at Ray Summit by AnyScale in San Francisco. My name's Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for AI tech news.